All right, welcome back to the Shack and First Down Buffalo pregame show, joined by a good friend, Tyler Dunn, Western New York native who left for a while but came back. He's written for the Buffalo News. He's worked with the Packers in Milwaukee in the Green Bay area, Bleacher Report, and uh, also an esteemed author. I know you're you're pretty humble about stuff like that, and maybe that esteemed author part is a little much for you, but what you do is fantastic. Um, GoLongTD.com is the website, also the podcast. You've been doing a thing with Isaiah McKenzie for the last couple of years. Uh, you and Big Dirty, or Little Dirty rather, have uh, gotten really close, and uh, that's a really fun thing to watch. And are you still doing that live in East Aurora? Yes, yes. Uh, the last show is actually Monday at Mister's. Uh, just confirmed with Isaiah uh, the other day that it's still on. I mean, obviously, you know, we're all trying to wrap our heads around what we saw Monday night at eight forty-four p.m. But um, he's in. He wants to talk about life and football and and wrap up the regular season ahead of the playoffs. You know, under the assumption that we even have football. I, I think we're all kind of still wondering that. But uh, yes, one more to go. You know, if, if if I was someone that was going to consult with you, I would call your podcast 40-53. And I say that because you are happy to, and I think it's a strength of yours, to, to interview sort of the more obscure down the depth chart guys, right? The players that don't make the big money, they're not, they don't have a ton of star power, but their stories are star power-ish. Uh, and I say that because one of the guys you interviewed was DeMar Hamlin. And that's a big reason why we're having you on the show this week to talk about your sit down with him. Um, why choose him as a subject for your podcast? Honestly, it, it, it's rooted in chicken wings. Um, he, he tweeted out uh, at, I think it was shortly after the bills drafted him, right? Sixth round, 212th overall. Nobody really knows who DeMar Hamlin is. I don't really know who DeMar Hamlin is. You know, I watch a little college football. Went to went to Syracuse, so they played Pitt, but you know, not not exactly a, a loyal alumnus tuning in every Saturday to uh Orange football. Uh so I, I I saw the tweet. He asked fans, give me your top five wing spots. The locals, as always, deliver. I think that he had like 194 replies, and Barbell and Elmos came up again and again and again. He he did the barbell thing with his family, I believe, already. So, and I, I love barbell. I'm not going to say a bad word about barbell. But I think Elmo's probably number one on the power rankings. At that time, you know, 911 Tavern, I don't want to get off the rails here, but I think 911 Tavern is probably number one in my power rankings. But Elmo's still, I just had the, their wings recently, still very, very good. Um, so I reached out to Damar, said, hey, saw the tweet, saw you want to get to know the area a little bit. Don't know much about you, but let's eat some chicken wings and find out. And he was all about it, right? That says a lot about Tamar Hamlin. Sure. It's a random dude, you know, from Ellicottville, New York, who cannot even conceive McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania, and everything he saw. Like, wanted to throw yourself into that world in a straight, like, I don't know. It just speaks to his kind, gentle soul and, and wanting to sit down and share his story. So that's how it started. Uh, he walked into Elmo's, we grabbed a table, and it, it took on a life of its own. I, I want to say we probably hung out for over two hours. That's amazing. And, and you know, you hear about DeMar's enormous personality. Was it was that something that, you know, immediately you noticed when, when he not only when you talked to him, but and set it up. But when you got to Elmo's and he walked in, was that something you immediately noticed when you when you first met him in person? Yeah, I think it's a it, he has just a, a kind, just gentle, warm soul just uh you know how you can really pick up on body language in, in everyday life like you just kind of know this is somebody that i want to be around or this is somebody i don't want to be around he's somebody you want to be around there's just um there's just a general kindness to him and you can feel it it's palpable uh he you know there's no airs about him you know he, th th this was the number one recruit in the entire state of pennsylvania on the defensive side of the ball he, he's been destined for for greatness but i think the fact that he's been through so much from a young age, age 12, you know, through middle school, high school, even into college, he went through so much at Pitt with, with uh, his core muscle injury. It's really kind of made him as a person. I, I think he's, he's, he gets the big picture. He, he gets this higher purpose that he believes he really has to make real change in the world. So he had to answer a question, just um, there was no awkwardness. Maybe that's the best way to put it, right? We don't know each other at all. 
we meet up at Elmo's. It's like a first date, <laughs> right? A lot. Of, I always joke with my wife, like, and I go to see these players. It's like, it does feel like kind of a date, like a first date. You don't know each other. You're reaching out to each other. Hey, do you want to hang out? Do you want to get to know each other? Let's hear your story. And um, there are times where, you know, I hang out with a player and you know, everybody's different. I'm old at this point, you know, being 35 and God, I used to be the young guy covering the NFL. Now I'm like a middle-aged man. But there's times where, uh, you know, some of these players, they pull out the phone and they may be texting or distracted or it's like the one of the last things they want to do. But more often than not, like they're into it, they're engaged, they got big hearts, they've got stories to tell. And that was DeMar Hamlin. All right, bottom line, this is the most important part. Well, it's really not, but who paid the bill? <laughs> uh, good question. No, I know it was me. It was me. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, look, it, 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 it was a benefit. Treat. Right. It was a benefit to you. You're the Western New York host. This guy wants to learn about the region. You, that, that was, yeah, you did the right thing. Funny. Oh, my God. I don't want to get off the rails, but real quick on that, though. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, way back in my Bleacher Report days, J- Jalen Smith, that might have been his rookie year with the Cowboys, and we yeah. got together in Frisco, Texas. And he ordered, uh, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, get whatever you want. You know, knock yourself out. He got like this. Uh, what, Kobe beef, Wagyu, ribeyes, whatever the most expensive thing was. It's like the steakhouse in Jerry's world. And I can't remember what the bottom line. It was eight, nine hundred. It was probably over a thousand dollars, whatever his, wow. his steak cost. And it was, it was, it was so high that he looked at it and he's like, Yeah, I'll, I'll take care of this myself. I'll just I'll make it a tax write-off <laughs> or something. So <laughs> good for yeah, good. I don't want don't want any players out there thinking, oh yeah, hang out with Tyler and you know he'll just hey no, it's I'm on my own at this point. I can't just sign it off on Bleacher Report. Right, right. Well, good for him and you uh in that situation. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, when you first meet him, he's a virtual nobody in the football world, right? I mean, the, the people in Pittsburgh know about him. Maybe people from ACC colleges and ACC towns might know about him. But other than that, I mean, look, let's be totally honest. Prior to Monday night, most of the football world, even Bills fans, didn't know a lot about DeMar Hamlin, right? I mean, didn't know a whole, maybe they knew where he came from but they certainly didn't know his story, right? So here is your opportunity about a year and a half ago to learn his story and publish his story. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, what you learned. Let's start as a, a, about him as a player, uh, um, you know, his football life. Um, you know, we talked a little bit in the show today uh, about how, you know, this guy, and you mentioned a top recruit in Pennsylvania, could have gone to Penn State, could have gone to Ohio State, big power schools, instead decided to stay home, yeah. right? stay close to his mom, stay close to his younger brother. I mean, that all by itself is a statement about a kid with that much talent to not stray from his family, uh, keeping family first, right? No doubt. Could have gone to Clemson, Notre Dame, Ohio State, uh, Penn State, 48 scholarship offers, I believe. Uh, he, He was the number one defensive recruit in the state of Pennsylvania. And he chose to stay close to home. You know, Pitt, the campus was, you know, very close to McKees Rocks because he knew he had a little brother that looked up to him and he wanted to bring his little brother along for the ride. And and he knew what his life was like growing up in McKees Rocks. And it's, it's not like you necessarily need to just, you know, officially join a gang or sell drugs. No, like it is, there's just violence and there's bad influences around most corners. He said that about, now, more that he corrected himself, actually, more than half of the, the friends he grew up with died before the age of 21. Wow. And that's why he started ending every conversation with loved ones with, with those three simple words. I love you, uh, which that was when I saw the injury and, and realized who it was and, and thought back to that conversation. That was something that popped in my head. I, I could remember that vividly. And it was just was like it's such a lesson to take for all of us to take um, in all of our day-to-day lives, with all of our loved ones, just, just let them know you love them. Cause you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, so it w- went through that, you know, when his dad was taken away uh, to prison for the intent to sell drugs, he was sentenced to 10 years, did three and a half, got out, you know, got his life together, started a trucking business. They've got a great relationship now. He, he's back on track. Uh, but there was that period of time where it was just Damar and Damar's mom. They, there was nights where their, their heat in their, their home broke. It gets cold in Pittsburgh. Uh, there were mornings where he didn't have a meal to bring to school. So a buddy at school might give him a couple bites of his sandwich. It was rough. 
you know, he, he was up till midnight helping mom at her cleaning business. Uh, and she did kind of shield him from that world. I think that's what really helped. He had a mother that kind of protected him and, and, and showed him a different life. And a lot of kids don't have that. You fast forward to Pitt and, 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 and that opportunity to be a, a sign of hope for everybody in McKees. And that's why he, he wanted to stay in his hometown, but not to get ahead of myself, bull, but you know, he gets to Pitt and then he's not himself anymore. Right. He's not, he's out there playing and his, his mind is telling him to do stuff and his body can't execute it. He just, he doesn't have that trigger to just close on a ball carrier, uh, close on a ball in the air, make, make the plays that he did in high school. And it wasn't because the college game was too fast or anything. Um, He had a a hernia that was treated as a hernia, two surgeries uh, by Pitt's medical staff. And it did nothing. They did like this weird mesh thing that just kind of like, it doesn't completely reattach the muscle to the bone because they're treating it like a hernia instead of a true sports hernia, a core muscle injury. So he eventually gets a third surgery outside of the school. Uh, Dr. William Myers, I believe he specializes in this stuff in Philly. A lot of players go to him. Um, So once he did that, he was himself put together a, a hell of a collegiate career and got drafted by the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. And it'll be a captain. And we'll talk about this in the show as well about how, this is the kind of guy that the Bean McDermott team loves, right? Uh, perhaps an overachiever, but a captain, a guy that has all kinds of ability, but a guy that you need in your room because he has enough ability to play in the league and at the same time be an example for other guys, be a good family guy, family guy, good teammate, good brother. And you heard so much of that over the last week in terms of family and brotherhood. And Sean McDermott has preached that since day one in Buffalo, right? And DeMar Hamlin is the perfect example of what Sean McDermott is preaching. Am I wrong? You're absolutely right. I mean, this is the kind of player that not, I, I'll even take it a step further. Like you, you want to prop him up as an example in your own locker room as a team. Like this is, this is the exact kind of person, leader, um, family driven, 24 year old that you want in your building I think it's what the NFL wants. I mean, this, this is the exact kind of ambassador the league could ask for as, as you know, the, the, look, there's a lot of bad when it comes to the NFL and football. And, and we're all talking about it all week. We're all trying to figure out how do we even process this barbaric sport? How do we support it? How do I write about it? How do you talk about it? I'm struggling with it. I remember texting my wife, like, do we want Sonny to play football? He's one and a half. I mean, Pop Warner signups aren't for a while. But it's hard to wrap your brain around what we saw Monday night. I do think, though, that the, the true good that football can bring the world is it's such a platform for the DeMar Hamlins. Because there's a lot more DeMar Hamlins out there that come from really rough places, um, that know the thin line between life and death, you know, dark corners of America. There's so many neighborhoods like this. Where so Look, yeah, they entertain, entertain millions of people. But I think more importantly, DeMar Hamlin, Taiwan Jones, Isaiah McKenzie, Tyrell Dotson. I've done a lot of stories and podcasts with a lot of guys from places like this. More importantly than that, they're 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 giving inspiration to maybe maybe a dozen kids on their street, you know, back in their hometown. Maybe there's another DeMar Hamlin who's 12 that can't, you know, can't heat their home. It doesn't have a meal at school the next day, but they 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 see DeMar on TV make a big play and they think, man, I I there is a life outside of this. That's the good that football can bring. Yeah, for sure. And of course, the good, and, and it's it's sadly because of what happened on Monday night that attention was brought to DeMar. It's, it's unfortunate that people didn't know more about DeMar. It had to have this to happen for people to find out about DeMar. Agreed. And he stood for, and, and this toy drive and all of that. And look, I applaud everyone uh, from around the world that has – thrown their support, whether it's financially, whether it's a city lighting their lights in blue and red or putting up signs that say DeMar Hamlin, the Bengals fans, the Cincinnati fans, but fans all over the world have given support, shown support one way or another. And it's a, it's a, it's a shame that something like this had to happen for all of that to happen. Needless to say, to your point, one of the benefits was that now folks know that DeMar was doing this toy drive and started it. Before, when he had nothing virtually, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, when he was going through that stuff at Pitt and he didn't really, he didn't know where his football career was going to go. I mean, think how maddening that is 
you're the most dominant player on every field that you step onto. And all of a sudden you can't make the plays you've made your whole life. And, and you're, the medics are telling you, you're fine. Your coaches are saying you, Hey, you, you should be good to go. And you can't make those plays. I think psychologically it was unbelievably frustrating for Demar. but it was during that period that he started the getting the wheels turning on chasing millions, you know, chasing M's as we see. And, and he really wanted to start a foundation start something bigger than football to give back to McKeese rocks, to give back to kids who need mentors, who, who just need any hope at all. So that that's really, it got started way back then, right? I mean, this is long before Buffalo, long before he made plays on the field at Pitt. Um, he's had this vision and that's where I come back to that clear vision and purpose that a lot of players don't have, right? It's a, a lot, of, a lot of guys in the NFL, they're, they're playing because they're, they're good, which is fine. A lot of people, you know, go to their jobs and they don't love it, but they're good at their jobs. Um, he he's he wakes up with a purpose, and I use present tense because he's he's, he's going to fight through this. You know, know, knowing how how he attacks every day, like most people do. I don't I don't see this I don't see this stopping him. And by the way, uh, what you just said might sound cliche because you hear that a lot, right? Guys like, yeah. you know, first guy in the room, last guy to leave, attacks, hard worker, motor, yada, yada. We hear those terms all the time. But you've sat down with this gentleman and you've watched his short career proceed to this point and you can vouch for that statement, right? Totally, yeah. It's it's real, right? It's right. It's real. And, that, and that's the thing. Like, as we're talking, part of me is thinking, dude, you're, you're a six-round pick. I didn't say this. 212th overall you're a third string safety okay good luck you know you say you had this this higher purpose kind of like what you just said you know we might hear that and you think oh it's cliche everybody wants to you know change lives da, 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 da. he meant it <laughs> we, he's living it now right he's changing lives now he's raising millions upon millions of dollars now i i can't wait for him to open up his eyes and just and see the love and support and, and, and the lives that he's changing in the moment. Yeah. Think of the, think of the kid already a great kid, but when he realizes what's happened over however long it's going to be uh, until he could be made aware of this, he, it, he's going to be, blown. it's, it, it will, I think it will speed up his recovery process even more, yeah. right? Have it just, uh, there's so much psyche into, into the physical being that, knowing that i mean everything he he's gonna be a glow right i mean it's it's yeah. it's really remarkable last thing because i know uh we're a little bit short on time on the show today we've we've done a lot uh, and we're doing more as we progress but um off of uh, your sit down over wings uh first of all with demar um what version of elmo's wings did did he have do you recall and i understand that in pittsburgh he was a ranch guy but at some point eventually he got into the blue cheese <laughs> All right, I, th this is the kind of uh, information that I just can't go off of memory. So if you can just humor I me, I thought you were going to dive I got it right here. All right, so um, I think a lot of your listeners remember Adam well at Elmo's, right? Sure, absolute Western New York legend. Um, God rest his soul. Such a kind, kind person himself. Uh, I let him know that we were coming to Elmo's, and he said, "Okay, we got you covered." And he uh, brought out, and I, so we get there, I'm like, I right, just, he wants the full Elmo's, full Western New York, Buffalo chicken wing experience. We'll just kind of follow your lead. And that's what DeMar wanted. He's like, I, whatever you guys think. So he brought out 10 barbecue milds, 10 Cajun honey mustards, 10 Cajun milds, 10 regular milds, and for good measure, a side of Cajun fries. And ah, I, I've tried, I should really look back at my notes because I imagine I put it somewhere. I do think that we just destroyed all 40 of those wins. Wow, impressive. I don't remember bringing home a box. That's impressive. That's impressive. Yeah. Um, outside of that accomplishment <laughs> uh, at your, at your, on your date, um, what for you was the, the most significant takeaway? What, what did you learn about DeMar Hamlin that day and maybe since then that you won't ever soon forget? Hmm. I think it's um, it's something simple and small, but it's that I love you. And he really started telling everybody, I love you because so many of his family 
so many of his friends, so many people around him were, were dying, um, were, were falling victim to all, all the trappings there in McKees Rocks. And he kind of got into that. He called it a neighborhood tradition that a lot of people there just end every conversation with, I love you. And I feel like if we can take anything out of DeMar Hamlin's story, out of anything that we saw Monday night that was beyond horrifying, it's just, just you know, hey, if you want to throw $20 toward the toy drive, awesome. That goes a long way. Those $20, they add up. But even in our everyday life, just just remind your mom, your dad, you know, your 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 loved ones, your wives, your husbands, that you love them. Um, as he was laying on the turf, uh, my my wife was texting me, and my my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my brother. I think we're all kind of doing the same thing, right? They knew I was at the game, and they wanted to know what I was seeing. It's like you're just kind of overcome with this feeling of I, I love you. Like you just you you, you just got to tell people that because you, Demar Hamlin woke up, went to the stadium, put on his jersey to live out his dream. He didn't go out there to – he's not even thinking about what happened. Nobody is. I mean, everybody knows he might tear an ACL, might even suffer a concussion. Nobody expects this. And I, I'm sure a lot of people in Tamar's life were telling him how much they love him and vice versa. Let's just take that. Let's, let's just live like Tamar would. Um, with those three simple words. Yeah, you know, Del Reed was on from 26 Shirts, and he, uh, last week, we, you know, we talked a little bit about the history of, of 26 Shirts, and they have a, a great new one uh, that basically says, to the to the same effect, show love, it doesn't cost anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which I think sends virtually the same message, and yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's an important one to learn. And I think we saw it a lot from, like we said, the support that he's gotten from all over the planet, from people that might not have liked the Bills or liked Buffalo or or even knew DeMar Hamlin. There is love being shown everywhere and compassion. And you see some of the media coverage of it and how they've treated it, um, where they have broken this down to the very simplest of terms in, 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 in term that DeMar in the end and these players are human beings and you got to care about the human being and about the person and the people and not so much about the player. Um, I appreciate you, man. Uh, this is great. And folks, if you want to see uh, the, the wing discussion uh, with Tyler Dunn and DeMar Hamlin, it's uh, golongtd.com. Everything's there. I would urge you to subscribe. Uh, certainly when you go there, you don't have to, right? Uh, when you, when you go and look at all the, all the material, but find it and, and check it out. It's great stuff. And look forward to, if you're in East Aurora or the South Downs on Monday night, it's uh, right. It's at Mr's right there in East Aurora. Uh, what time for right, Monday with Isaiah? Just walk six in. Six o'clock. Okay. Yep. And go check it out uh, in person. It'll be Tyler and I, Isaiah McKenzie uh, doing a little discussion. And of course, Isaiah, I'm sure we'll have a lot to say about Tamar Hamlin and what happened on Monday night. You saw uh, some video of him as everything was happening. And uh, clearly like the, his other teammates and brothers uh, were, were distraught by the situation that they were witnessing in person in Cincinnati. Uh, again, Ty, man, uh, best to the fam. And thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. Hey, best to you and your, and your fam. Uh, a, a pleasure to, to see you even, even under the circumstances. Uh, let's, let's make sure we, we do it again soon and, and don't need something like this to, to get together. Bull. That's right. Always good to see you. I love you. <laughs> hey, love you too, man. Go along TD.com. Tyler Dunn. Thank you again, man. Uh, back with more. We'll get Sam and Jared together. We'll go around the round table when we continue on the Shack and first Buffalo pregame show.